Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, chat. How's it going? <laughs> Keep forgetting LinkedIn has a live feature. Yeah, me too. Hey, everybody. Super good to see you all. Thanks for coming to hang out. Happy Monday. Happy start of the week. Good to see everyone. Uh, we'll give it a little bit. We'll jam out for a little bit to see, hey, who might come hang out with us. And this is a really cool song. You know me, you know, I, I do like to indulge. I like to uh, get some of the good tunage going. And kind of get in the mood, kind of get in the vibe. Hello from Portugal. Hey, Greaser, that's quite a ways. It's Tuesday already? Well, it's Tuesday over there. Time is so weird. Favorite synthwave artist? The Midnight, hands down. I do like a lot of uh, Dance with the Dead. I listen to a little bit of Gunship. Does Time Cop count? I think Time Cop does. Is that hacking? Oh, yeah. We're here to hack. Hello from Poland. Goodness, you are all everywhere. Thank you so much. Super good to spend some time with everybody. Happy Monday. Um, we'll jam out for a little bit. Would love to chat. Would love to catch up. See how your weekend was. And um, then we'll get on the keyboard. Actually do some fun stuff. Is Tails hackable? Yes or no? Tails Linux, I'm assuming you mean the amnesia uh, distribution. So, I mean, it's the same as any others. Like, if you end up executing code or running a program or some bash script or whatever, again, it's Linux. So, any natural language will run on there, usually, if the interpreter's there. Like, it can be. Yeah. Hey, Nordgaren, thank you so much for jumping in. Um, guys. Oh, chat. My friends, my family, I am so behind. It is Monday. It is literally the start of the week, January 22nd. And I was supposed to have all this time for the start of the year to prepare and get ready and have things staged and nothing, none of it. So uh, look, we're cramming as usual to get uh, things kind of prepped and ready for this week. But you know, you know how it is. You know, you know how we do, but we'll, we'll get it done. We'll have a lot of fun together. Is audio all good? Is, uh, am I too loud? I'm in the red in OBS, and it always tells me, like, oh, don't go, don't get into the red. But, yeah, thanks so much for coming to hang out. It, it bums me out that LinkedIn does not tell me who you are. I don't get a username. I see LinkedIn user. So, to every LinkedIn user who, who there are, who there is, who has out there, whatever words. I appreciate you being here, LinkedIn user. Oh, there's one! Brandon, hello. <laughs> cool. Uh, what should we chat about, chat? Hey, I um, I spent some time over the weekend getting together IRL. Oh, you know what? We can pull that up. In real life, IRL. With my good friend, my great, great bud... Ben. Nahamsek. So, uh, it was really, really cool to spend some time with him in person. Like, yeah, sitting beside me in the studio, in the room. We pulled in another chair and we made it happen. Uh, but we got to record together and it was really, really cool. We went on a little bit of an adventure. We did some, uh, dumpster diving, a little safari ride. And found some weird and wild stuff. Uh, so I'm very, very grateful for him coming to visit. I asked him, can I tell this story? And I don't know if he responded. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. 
So I don't know if I could tell the story. <laughs> I wanted his permission. I need. I need. I wanted his permission. I needed his blessing. Uh, but there was a little bit of a funny story for him coming to spend some time and hang out. But we got dinner. Hey, we got to hang out. Uh, it was just really cool. So uh, I think Ben will put out some content on that like late February. Um, we want to cut up, make the video pristine and proper as we should. But. I'm excited about that, and it was really, really cool to spend some time with him. So, collaboration 2024. I told you we're doing it. We're we're, we're getting better. How's the back camera look? Still good. How's the right camera look? Still good. I looked at the wrong one. <laughs> Left camera. All right, cool, cool. Super good. So I don't think I have too much to ramble and rant about. Not gonna lie, there's no announcements currently. Oh, other than, okay, we are recording with uh, Ryan Chapman sometime this week. Folks might have tuned in to him to um, catch the ransomware video. And I think I have that, I can plug that on the channel. Can I mute tab? Yeah. It's a version of. Sorry, I thought I muted the tab and then apparently didn't let it happen. I might have shown this already. But um, Ryan and I will get together again and record some some good stuff. We're trying to think on what would be a good idea. So if you have any ideas, let me know. You know Ryan is hardcore into a lot of the incident response and digital forensics and a little bit of the like more cybercrime threat intelligence stuff. And I'm covering his face. I feel so bad. Um... But I think a lot of folks really, really love spending time with him. Because for one thing, the man is hysterical. Absolute joy to be around because it just laughing the whole time. So we'll do that. And then um, I don't know if I'm going to leak. I don't know if it's a leak if I say what else we're doing this Friday. But there is a group. There is a group of creators that are getting together to record some uh, something a little bit out of the ordinary and I'm excited about that. It'll be really, really cool to get that group of, of folks together and then make some content on something that is just, I don't know, if anything it's for us to enjoy and to laugh uh, and for you all just as well, if anyone is interested in it, just how weird some of that stuff happens. So that will be this Friday. I don't know when there's content coming out on it, but Thursday and Friday are busy with uh, new friends, new folks and all incredible things. So, is there anything else? Is there anything else to chat about? People's Call Center 2024? I have not heard from Pierogi in a little bit of time. Uh, I saw him release a video, but in a lot of the kind of conversations and channels that we'd normally be hanging out in, I think he's been quiet. I think he's been a ghost. I don't know what's going on, but I, I wish him well, as always. Lyron Segev, thank you so much. Incredible guy. All right. Have I read the hacker's handbook? And if so, how much do you feel like you've learned from it? Something that I would like to do for a stream is to go through all the books on my bookshelf, but it will be very weird because I, I gotta be straight up and honest. Like I don't read all that much. I don't, I don't read all the books that I have. I've not gone through them cover to cover to cover <laughs> multiple books. And that'll be its own embarrassment, right? So but I would showcase, like, these are the things that I have. These are the things that I, like, flip through when I want to. Nightwolf, thank you. I appreciate the t-shirt. Right, yeah. I got the I got the black one from them. I don't know if folks are familiar, but Black Hills Information Security, who puts this out. Uh, their hacker, or Rika shirt, the sweatshirt, along with the red team one. They have a, a black one just as well. The Art of Memory Forensics. The Art of Memory Forensics is written by my boss. <laughs> Can we discuss critical zero trust? I have a video where I'm kind of beaten up or at least chatting about the idea of zero trust because it's not like my favorite thing to say. I feel like that it can be a little bit of a supercharged buzzword and I don't really struggle with it. 
there was a some partnership that we're doing with some company um, and for, you know, the talk track and the bullet points of what you'd they'd like you to say and, you know, chatting about things, they mentioned like, oh, we're using zero trust. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. I don't want to say that. <laughs> so it's just feeling it out. It's just finding what's comfortable. But zero trust is, is quite a phrase. Why am I not making a video on lapses and their attack on like something like NVIDIA? Um, I could, I don't know. There's so much stuff. Is the stream stuck? You're, you're worrying me. Maybe I don't know if I lost internet or not. Let me know. But, uh, no, I haven't done anything on the lapses front. It's a weird balancing act from trying to cover and trying to chat about like genuine, real, actual current threats, because I don't by any means want to be emboldening or emblazing what they're up to. Um, and that's, a, a strange balance. Yeah. You know. You know what I'm saying. Business continuity plan. How do you mean? How would you ex how would you expand on that? Like, hey, having a hot site, having a cold site. Hey, making sure the backups are in place. Testing the backups. Actually testing your backups. <laughs> Sorry, that's a soapbox. Any best process to follow to decode malicious scripts embedded in phishing emails um make sure you're using the opposite operating system than what is it intended to run in granted that's might be tough in the web browser stuff did i see the sec twitter got uh, account got hacked via sim swap was it sim swap i uh i thought they i saw some of the response and there were some reporters who were asking about this um I think there was a conversation of multi-factor authentication that was supposed to be on, but was not because of some of the changes with X or Twitter or Twix, right? Was it a SIM swap? Now I gotta go. I, I had a personal message about it, which is why I'm checking my phone. Eleanor Terrett. That was one of the reporters that was covering it. Let me see if I can pull that up. We can read on it. We can we can go look together. I, I I said this person's name to myself to go Google to go research, and I immediately forgot. What? <laughs> oh no! Just lots of different uh, things. Mute site. This is what I saw in some messages. Security Exchange Commission provides an updates on its X account hack saying two-factor authentication had been disabled for around six months prior to the hack. While MFA had previously been enabled, it was disabled by X support at the staff's request. Which staff? Am I misreading? Is that X or is that SEC? MFA remained disabled until staff re-enabled it after the account was compromised on January 9th. Oh. So it wasn't... Oh, it, it was indeed a SIM swap that occurred via the unauthorized party in Green Access. What is that? Sorry, light mode. Sorry, all you vampires. Bright white colors here. I haven't read this, so forgive me. I did just kind of want to look. Who was the target of the sim swap attack? Just one of the social media managers of the Security Exchange Commission? I'm not going to process this all in the moment on the fly right now. I got to be honest. <laughs> um, that's such, that's such like, 
That's such the blanket statement. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not poking jabs. I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I'm not being, you know, but it's such like a blanket thing. We take your cybersecurity very seriously. We take your security very seriously. It, it sucks to say that. It sucks to be in the position to say that, obviously. So I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. What do you think, chat? Let me go read and check in with you all. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate you, Lara, reading that too. The attack from Lockbit to Subway? That would blew my mind. Because it hurt me personally. I'm bummed to see Subway take a hit. Not as much as when Black Cat and Alf V hit five guys. That was like a real tearjerker. But... Someone from the SEC couldn't get into X, so they removed the MFA so someone could log in, and it was never turned back on. Um, I think that's the right... interpretation. Hard to find value in them saying that with how long MFA was disabled. Yeah. I mean, it's something that, like, you kind of have to... You, you have the slap in the face reminder that like, oh shoot, I need to go double check, triple check, quadruple check that everything that I actually care about has amount of things over it, uh, like two-factor authentication or pass keys or hardware tokens, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, especially when you're, you know, an organization or a company or a business or a government entity, dare I say it. But look, there's a funny thing. And let me, let me pause the music or like fade it out for a quick second. I gotta be real, shit happens. And I'll say that straight up. Like there, there's reality where, yeah, anyone could get hacked. Me included, myself included. I'm waiting for the day. And that'll be a shit. I'll, <laughs> that'll be come to you all with like a dog, like a dog with my tail between my legs. Like, well, I thought I knew what I was doing. I, I like to pretend anyway. <laughs> I try to fake it, but yeah. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you on the SEC stuff, but look, I, I keep feel bad about screaming and shouting about the bare bone basics, but like that two factor on the occasion, that long complex password, that different one from any of the others, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Challenge accepted, LinkedIn user. Don't you dare, LinkedIn user. You amorphous, vague, general LinkedIn user. I have no idea. <laughs> what is your go-to resource for public incident response reports? Uh, the DFIR report, without a doubt. Again, shown this. Uh, I, I feel bad. The DFIR report. They sent out a, a private one just the other day. And that's a really, really a cool thing. If you are willing to, you know, hey, support them and offer uh, the great things and, and give them the real love that they deserve. Um, some of the more internal ones that don't make it to a full-blown post for incident response and threat intel, um, they'll kind of just share with you privately in an email. So DFIR report without a doubt. Do, do, do. <laughs> no, not the LinkedIn user. No. <laughs> the password for my account is just my username with three at the end of it. Yeah, Hunter two. Oh, the McDonald's get leak. Oh, don't get me started. Why are we doing? Why are we going down this rabbit hole? Why are we repeatedly referencing? Oh shoot! All the things that already went wrong in 2024. Trello two, David. No. No way. No shot. I'm calling Cap. What? There's a broadband forum mentioned four or five hours ago. Something 15 days ago. All right. We got to pull ourselves out of this. We, we, we can't. This is, this is FUD. This is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. We're, we're optimists here. We better security. Oh, I want to give, I want to do a talk track on that. Cause, uh, I see it a lot. The, 
and I've seen it especially. There was a beautiful tweeter. Oh, okay. I'm gonna show it. I'm gonna show it. I gotta go find it. I'm sorry. I get all my things from Twitter. This is probably awful. And I promise we will get to some on the keyboard time and play with some stupid JavaScript. But I bookmarked this because it was so sharp. I think this this is Christina. Let me refresh. This was a swift kick in the pants for all the right reasons. Like, n not wrong. Cybersecurity is just too much. Can I go do something else and make my money? Like, no one is shifting left. No one is putting security closer into the development lifecycle to write secure code, to make secure applications. No one's securing anything by design. It's not baked into, oh, the product roadmap or, oh, what we're actually going to offer to the world in our services or our platform. Productivity and capitalism always win. Look, it's... We go to a trade show. You go to a conference. You go to a vendor's vendor sales pitch. And making a product or selling cybersecurity, which is the right thing, like not to say the right thing, but it is a natural thing that happens, right? Um, the business that does that wants to make money and be financially healthy. So they will lean towards, you know what, what's right and what's good for the sake of keeping their margins and not what is just inherently naturally more secure or good. Look, we just need to crank through, meet the deadlines, Hey, ship this on time and whatever falls through the cracks on its own stuff like Microsoft. And there was an article on that just the other day stuff with more resources, more time, more money still get hit. Like we just freaking read about it can happen. To anyone. I mentioned that no one's hiring. People are burning out. I'm burnt out too many goddamn alerts. So, uh, that was a swift kick in the pants. And I wonder if that is ever worth, like I've, I've danced with that idea of like, would I give a talk on like, look, we're stuck on the treadmill. Are we ever going to get off? Are we ever going to actually make progress? What is it? What is progress? Is it, oh, everyone writes in Rust now. No more C, no more C++. We, <laughs> we had a really funny internal chat on that because it was a, it was quite a thing. I think a little bit of a, a clip from like a, another stream. I won't go into, I won't go into it, but Shoot, what the heck, everybody? You're making me such a pessimist on Monday. All right, we've been riffing for 23 minutes. Is there anything else we want to chat about? That tweet is fire. Yeah. It makes me wonder, because everyone talks a little bit about like their exit ramp. When are we going to be done with cybersecurity? When are you going to quit? Are you going to quit? Are you going to move on to something else? Because are we fighting a losing battle? I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. MFA is near normal. That's true. Yeah, I think we've made a lot of progress on that. Uh, soon we'll do pass keys or hardware tokens without a doubt. I hope. Will passwords ever die? It's like cash. Will it ever go away? Decaf, John. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> Izzy, super good to see you. If you are the Izzy that I'm thinking of, I'm assuming. All right, everybody. Let's, let's goof around. Let's nerd out. Let's get on the fail train. Ha <laughs> ha. Here we go. Jumping in. So, I caught wind of this little file. And everyone's been asking when are we going to do a little bit more malware and it's like, you know what? That's it's sometimes tough because I got other stuff that we got to dig into. Um but I saw this file come through and there's a hash if you're really into that. Not that you can see that unless I bring it all the way down to the absolute end of the screen. <laughs> so SHA-256 um, for this thing. And let me say, before we get too far down the rabbit hole here, 
I started this. I started to see how far we could pull this thread. And I thought, you know what? Maybe this would be kind of fun and kind of cool to do on stream. Because everyone was saying, like, let's do more that thing. And I know it's not crazy elite. I'm not in Ghidra again. I'm not ripping through a debugger or a disassembler. You know, I like my scripting languages and just unobfuscating or unraveling things. So I got this thing. But let me add the disclaimer. I don't know where we will go. I don't know if this will work. I don't know if we'll be successful. This is... We're, we're throwing it out there. We're just trying it. So I've got that file. The 7-zip... Or the zip archive. We can extract with 7-zip. Get that shot 256 hash. Uh, as usual, our password is infected. Um, and it's this. So... We can check out what that is. It is just simply ASCII text. So obviously like a little bit of a scripting language. It has very long lines with, with no line terminators. Very long lines, in which case it's probably all just one line on its own. So if we try to look at this thing, it's gonna be a disaster. It's gonna be gross, it's gonna be awful, but can Cat even handle this file? What did that say it was? Oh God. How's bitrate gonna do? 43 mix. <laughs> 43 megabytes. Hey, thank you so much. Ending with Allie. I appreciate the raid. Super good to see you all. Thanks for coming to hang out. Oh, I think I, I think I'm in bat. I think I'm in bat cat, which is why we're in a scroll and not the full output of the file. But needless to say, this is gross. This is pretty awful. And if it's 43 megs of just plain text, we're in for a doozy. Um, and I don't, again, let me, let me say straight up, don't know how far we're gonna go. So we could try to open this thing up in like sublime text, but it'll probably choke. It might just die. Oh no, okay, it actually, it actually got it. But my horizontal line, like my horizontal scroll bar, is way over there. This is a vibe. This is a bop. What are we listening to? It's not a Reba. It's not a... The, the music on Artlist has no business being on like a, a music service platform like that. It is so good. So here's the thing. If I try to turn this to a uh, word wrap and try to see it all at once, Sublime Text will absolutely choke. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I guess it survived just fine. But we got a lot of work to do if we even want to attempt to make sense of this. And I don't know what we will do. I don't, I don't even know how far we'll get if it will succeed. So I'm tempering expectations. But there's a lot of random stuff here. What we could do is try to do a stupid find and replace. What was I replacing? Power system. Is this a holiday song? It's literally Deck the Halls. I know it's like past Christmas, but you, you gotta give the devil his due. So... I would try to replace every semicolon with a new line, and that's normally just the first thing that we do when we're cutting up with a giant single line here. Um, that'll be messy, that'll be gross, it won't work all that well. But I can't, I can't, I can't like funnel a 43 megabyte file into, oh, a beautifier, right? I mean, I don't know, maybe I can, maybe do some. Does anyone have a good JavaScript beautifier that's local? Anyway. Let's see if Sublime Text will survive the abomination of replacing every single semicolon with a semicolon and a new line. Nope. He's dead, Jim. Can't even move the window anymore. <laughs> Alright. So, other solution... 
is when we cat this file, as we've done on the command line, is let's try to just use a TR. We can try to do a text and replace. We could use said. Does anyone know a good said syntax off the top of my head? Does anyone know a said syntax off the top of your head to actually do the find and replace with a, like retaining the semicolon? Because I'm pretty sure, like if I just do TR, it will need me to supply a single character. Like I don't think I can put semicolon new line in there. Oh, I don't think that even worked. Did that even do anything that I wanted? Does that work? Okay, so that will give us output. Bitrate might install. Does prettier work? We could try it with said. Big thanks to RK17CC in the chat. Uh, we'll use a substitute, regular replace, and then I'll need a backslash N. Will that will that work? Or do I need another backslash? I... That's why I'm confused. And that's why I'm not smart. So. I need G. Oh, global. You're right. Thank you. I'm sorry. I am an idiot. And then I don't think we need two backslashes because that would be literal. Yeah! Look at you, chat. You're smart. You're smart. You are smart. So... That has a lot to cut through, but that will give us at least like an all lines dot JS. Uh, should we number that like a zero one? Okay, that was honestly faster than I thought. Yeah, awk might work well too. Drop your awk syntax in the chat. Do it for the fans. Drop your awk syntax in the chat. I'm really sorry. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. So we've got our all lines.js <laughs> can sublime text handle that <laughs> that's still the old window it's still it's still trying its darndest to do the old find and replace i appreciate you sublime text thank you for your service all right so here we are with all of the lines now separated based off of semicolons. And it was a giant chunk of stuff to start with. And now we just happen to have a good... One million three hundred and twelve thousand two hundred lines. So there's that. Can, um... Can anyone please tell me, and again, I'm genuinely asking, I'd love to learn. I do want to be schooled. Give me the constructive criticism. Is there something smarter here? Is there something easier or better that I could do to press the go button and just sort of like let it rip to deobfuscate, to unravel? Is there an abstract syntax tree? Is there a, I don't know, something else? Because... Obviously, we are not going to sit here and try to, oh, manipulate, clean, beautify, manually by hand, a million lines. So, this is where I will get into the gimmick that I told you I got to when I started this, and then realized, you know what, maybe this would be more fun on stream. And we'll get some tunage. Because I was scrolling through this. And I noticed this, like, Thosio syntax here. That's a function call. They're also random digits, just random integers, decimals hanging out. But Thosio is the only thing that's actually, at least at the very end of the line, at the very end of the file, ran. All these other random variables just kind of being concatenated together. It doesn't matter to me if they aren't going to be used. DE4JS is a tool for exactly this. What? Digital Sparky, you're blowing my mind right now. Is there legitimately a... Sorry, I don't know if you heard the old... The old... <laughs> Whoops, whoopsies. DE4JS? Is that a thing? 
Or do you mean DE4 dot? Let me go learn. I wonder if DE4JS could just rip this apart. Oh! It's in my his- Well... Is there a local version? I'm assuming we could just run this. DE4JS helper doesn't work offline. Oh, you could just straight up use Docker. Can I just do it naturally? Is it not a command line tool or does it have to be through the user, the browser? Maybe I could just straight up upload a file? I don't want to copy and paste all this. Would that even work? Paste. This is, this is where I crash Firefox. F's in the chat for Firefox. Oh! Oh, he's back! Wait a second. I think you're lying to me. Yeah, just run it on the box. We, we will do that, like, realistically. I will probably just slap it into Node. Now, here's my fear. Did it actually put in everything? I don't... Is it still pasting? <laughs> 40 megs of raw text, baby. There's a local file button next to string. Oh my God. How is that supposed to be a button? I'm going to Karen right now. Can I speak to your man? Can I speak to your UI UX designer? Firefox is choking. It's dead. We killed him. Let me take a look at chat and make sure I'm not. Oh. Oh my God. Hexit, you you said we ain't recording and you reminded me that I should have been recording to capture the VOD. I'm an idiot. Now I'm recording. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, whenever we start a stream, whenever we start streaming together, everybody, remind me to press record. Reading chat, reading chat. Okay. Firefox has, oh no, you're back. You're alive now. Can I choose a file? Of that. And, what the, f what? What is it doing? I don't trust this D4 dot. Thank you, James. I appreciate the reminder. All right. Let me pull the plug on this. If you're cool with it. I don't know if DE4JS will survive all this code. And granted, I broke it. Maybe I should have just used the original one because when we, when we end up kind of removing all the new lines, it probably lost some of the logic. I, I could give it this, but then even that. Oh! Belay my last. You sm Wait a second. This is... I still don't know if I trust this. This still looks a little bit wonk. Are you a string right now? No. That looks fine. What? Maybe this is better than nothing. Okay. Look, I will gladly accept the indicator that I'm dumb. 62 megs. Hell yeah. Feed it to me. You got this, Subble. 
Can you make this JavaScript? <laughs> oh, hey, you kind of did it. But like these lines sketch me out. I'm not positive about those. This all looks reasonable. Or is this because of my new line shit? Maybe that's because the new line shit. Yeah, okay, let me start from scratch. And I'm choking Sublime Text again. Here we go. Maybe it just took a long time to parse the original one. And I just press the button and it just does it. Invalid file type. Oh, it would help if I knew how to read. God dang. Do it to it. You won't. <gasps> Keep going. Try, try your hardest to E4JS. Don't forget to try the other options as well. Can I just tell him, like, do everything? Just make it, make it work. <laughs> make it good. Yeah, looking at... All right, you do your thing and let me roll down where I thought I was going here because I think we can make our lives easier because I noticed something. When I was kind of taking a better look at this earlier, I had a thought. When I went to go look at this Thozo function call, see if it did anything else, it did do a Thozo definition over on line 13. Pretty far from line million three hundred and twelve thousand one hundred and ninety nine. And then I noticed there was another definition of Thozo, just a little bit higher above that. With the exact same syntax and logic, even variable names as the line 13. So, if I keep looking for my my buddy old pal Thozo, it gets ran again. With the exact same argument parameter, 3,149. And then it gets defined again with the exact same syntax and ran again with the exact same argument and then again and again and again and again and again. And I was like, wait a second. How similar is all the stuff just before it? Even this stuff. 6372071462253. The numbers, Mason. What do the numbers mean? It repeats itself. It literally repeats itself, and it seems like it has delimiters to denote the very, very start and the very, very end of what would be one procedure. But the exact same variables being set, added together for randomness, and all that. Now, I can't say with like a thousand percent certainty, because I didn't write anything to like do, do this over and over and over again for every single possible occurrence, but I would go out on a limb and say it's just repeating. So, what we could do is try to take from the absolute start to our good friend Thozo, wherever we find him. Where is our first Thozo appearance? Well, that's defining. That's actually executing, right? Can I literally look for exactly literally this? and do a find all. Yep. 
it is literally everything. It is every part of the file. Right? It's all highlighted. So if I press delete, I don't know if Sublime Text will survive, but will it kill everything? Only new lines are left. And I'm trying to scroll through like the uh, vertical sidebar to see if there's literally anything else. And there's not. It's only white space. So that clues me in and tells me it is not actually a million three hundred and twelve thousand two hundred lines of code. It's just duplicating what would be up to that weird string of digits, six, three, seven, two, zero, seven, one, whatever, whatever. And then this exact delimiter to start something else at the beginning and every new segment. So yeah, 270 lines. Wow. We don't even need D4JS. Did... <laughs> Granted, this is probably pretty helpful because it saved us the work from doing that later. Let me see if I can now download that. And I am honestly surprised that it survived. Yeah? Give me the new one. Does that make sense? Yeah, they just really wanted me to read all those lines. GG. So it's kind of interesting to me because, like, why would it do that to begin with? What What is the number of lines that we had divided by that amount of stuff? How many did we have? We had... One three one two two zero one. Two two zero one. Is that right? I'm pretty sure that's right. Divided by two hundred and seventy. Why did it repeat itself four th like almost five thousand times? Uh, Izzy asking all the good questions. What kind of malware is this? I'm pretty sure. And this, so I I, I can't say that I'm sure. Um, I was told that this is presumably goot loader. Um, but I have not been able to look for sure. So look, D4JS did a pretty bang up good job. Not going to lie. Could we save a copy of this? Call it like zero two first part. And then we, and it already cleaned it for us. Yeah. If you have a uh, weird, sketchy, random files, just email it to me. What are we listening to? Does the knowledge of it being Gootloader potentially help us understand how to unravel it? Is that what you're asking? Does the knowledge of what it is? Uh, do we understand how that loader is supposed to function? Um, not right now. In my mind, it, like in my opinion, I don't think that clues me in. Really, Ryan, Ryan Rowcliffe says, look, the lag on LinkedIn was real bad. Yeah. What is Gootloader? Who are you in for a treat? Gootloader. <laughs> Blackberry, literally with a like absolute answer. <laughs> Blog post titled the exact same. What is Gootloader malware? Uh, stealthy malware classified as this first stage downloader designed to attack Windows system. It's considered an initial access as a service or IaaS tool to be used within ransomware. Or ransomware as a service. Um, seen a lot of other things like Gootkit to stage some others. And Gootloader has been around since 2020 but oftentimes used for delivering either a Cobalt Strike Beacon and then eventually deploying uh, Revil or R Evil, depending on how you say. Now, again, this is speculation. I do not know a thousand percent if it is Gootloader because we haven't done our full-fledged analysis. We, we haven't finished going through the code. If we even will, if we will succeed. So, um, yeah, YouTube will also have a delay. I'm sorry. I, uh, I think Restream just forces that. I don't know if I can change the delay. I might be able to. Um, 
Normally, Gootloader is a .js, excuse me, whoa, a .js file. So people call that JavaScript. It is, in my mind, JScript because it's meant to be executed naturally, locally, native to the Windows operating system. I will die on this hill. It is JScript. I will die on that hill. I got some I got some angry YouTube comments. It's like, oh, it's called JavaScript. I'm like, no, JavaScript's in the browser. Yes, this can run on the browser, but it's going to end up using stuff native to local Windows. And again, if I'm wrong, I'm happy to be schooled. I presume you knew what it was via the source you procured the virus. Yeah. So, now that we have a semi-deobfuscated, at least like beautified, at least prettified segment here, we can cut up what would be our first part. And let's go see if we have our Thozo function. That's defined here. And then it's called, and then we have our new delimiter. Whoa. Delimiter to delineate our more seven variable. Yep. So let's quit beating around the bush. And let's try and put this stuff all together. Let's nuke everything after our first part. And then let's make a new file that we kind of start to figure it out. <laughs> That's what we'll call our, our file. And this is where I am now in uncharted territory. I have no clue. Can we, can we call it Bozo? Sebastian, you know what? I'll do it for you. Well, some stupid find and replace. Granite, let me make sure that... Those are, the, those are the only occurrences. Do it for you. All hail Bozo. All right. This will not end up executing. A random decimal integer isn't going to actually do anything, right? So, more seven is going to be a starting string of seemingly nonsense. I'm probably expecting that to be, um, like, encoded or encrypted in some way. So, how many more occurrences of more seven do we have? Not many. We'll just call it like angstring. How about that? And then what does this do? Do we have any other red fives? No. So we can pretty safely call that our first arg. And katizzy. That is our second arg. Ah! Um, I am Shell. Using Burp Decoder, I'm unsure what that would do for us. Dude, nothing one is literally not even passed. Nor is often J. Nor is Effect L. So those can be kind of... It doesn't matter. We'll call it like third arg. And then we'll kind of do the exact same thing for the others. Now, of course, this would be a little bit more uh, sexy. This would be a little bit more cool if we actually did uh, automate this in some way. But I don't know a good way to do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Wigism will end up calling Resext. And Resext... Oh, just returns the length. That's just a len function. That's all that function does. So, let's rename those. Are there any other occurrences of the random shit? No. Uh, can we... I, I know just like dumb, stupid find and replace is not really ideal because again, an abstract syntax tree would help us keep track of all these things. But for like the scope of functions, whether it's a first argument or a second argument or third, whatever, that one I think is kind of fine. So, so syscrum 
this is the most fun part of live streaming is just saying the random names of random variables. Um, this fella will just be length of. In which case, wirer. <laughs> Wire will be the length of the second argument. Wow, look at that. It's so readable now, and I understand what's happening and what it's doing. What is wash to? Where does wash to come from? If you define a variable, or if you reference a variable in JavaScript that has no val- Wait. You suck. It's going to have a value, some way, somehow. Right? Because JavaScript would... JavaScript would keep the current value as it is ran procedurally whenever we actually go ahead and run gizm. Right? And speechy? What are you doing here? What is speechy supposed to do? Other than roll seven. That's hysterical and totally makes me think of like Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> is there an eval command, Vic? I will find out for you not readily available to us, but it might be another layer after we figure out what all this junk is. Yeah? So let's see how far we can get. Oh shoot, I don't know what wash two is. I don't know what wash two is gonna be. We'll call that thing our iterator. If, if, if I could, if I dare even call you that. Um, <laughs> Why do I do this? Uh, iterator. Yeah? Or just I. You want to call another function friend of Bozo? Bozo doesn't even take an argument? What the fuck? What? Can you do that? Is that the only function call? Let me turn regular expressions back on. In like, in global scope, outside of a function, is that the only thing that actually gets like fired? Speechy, buy-in, trade J, no zero. <laughs> it's the only one. Bozo doesn't even take an argument, and it's the only thing that actually fires. I'm pretty sure you can do that. I'm pretty sure that's possible. You suck. Jam out time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Literally doesn't matter. JavaScript's like, I don't care. Shut up. You suck. Control D, get out of my life. All right. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Gabriel, everything in JavaScript is a suggestion. Have you seen the video? All right, tangent, tangent. I'm gonna find this for you and we're gonna watch it together. Let me find this video. We're gonna watch it together. If you haven't seen this video, I am going to give you the coolest party trick for all of your nerd programmer friends. Especially, especially your programmer nerd friends that know JavaScript. And front end engineers, please feast your eyes. As I turn the music here. This is the best video in the world. Yeah, you guys all, capability slob, you know it. What? Will this play well? No. All right, good. 
You guys know what wat means? Wat. Wat. Exactly, exactly. Let's talk about Ruby. Uh, in Ruby, if you reference an undefined variable, of course it name errors, as you would expect. And if you try to assign... All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Copyright, if that's even a thing. I gotta be a React streamer here. I need to add to the video and make it a transformative reaction. Uh, Ruby. I don't like to write Ruby. Uh, we use it in some of the uh, stuff for things that I am a part of. Uh, and I try to avoid it. I literally would write crappy Python code to translate into Ruby and uh, that I would never have to actually write core Ruby. That's a true story. I, it's just weird. Dude, gem files, they make no sense. The namespace, like global understanding of what objects and what variables and what functions are put together in other different files, is just absolute spaghetti code. Call me out. Call me out. Is Metasploit so Ruby? Yes. Metasploit is so Ruby. <laughs> yeah, Timothy, you know it. Stuff and things that I do. Write code to write other code, just worse. In a different language. <laughs> okay, React Streamer, check mark done. I don't need to add any more transformative stuff to the video. Let's get to the memes. Let's get to the laughs. Lol, Lamau, Raffle. Uh, B to A with them undefined. Of course, it name errors, as you would expect. And what happens if you try to assign A to A with A undefined? Nil. Correct. Nil. Or you hear the audience, it's like, nil. The, rights of, the knights of the round table, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Ruby. <laughs> hey, 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 credit where credit is due. Um, this is the what talk from uh, Gary Bernhardt. Uh, let me make sure that that's clear. I, I absolutely, this is his video. He owns it. He made this talk. It's hysterical. And it is absolute gold and should go down the hall of fame for software engineering and programmers. Ruby. <laughs> Ruby, unlike uh, some other dynamic languages, does not have bare words. So you cannot just type words in and have strings come out. By the way, whose idea was bare words? I think that sucks. This uh, may be a historic opinion. Put them in quotes. They're naked. They're just hanging out there, vulnerable, exposed. Give them some clothes, put, wrap them in single quotes even. Double quotes ideally. Unless you define uh, a particular method missing that does the right thing. And then if you type bare words, suddenly Ruby sports bare words. And in fact, it will even sport bare words with bangs in them. Uh, and this is not deserving of WAT. This is actually a result of how awesome Ruby is. <laughs> But if you ever actually do this, then whack. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Let's talk about JavaScript. <laughs> there we go. This is where we get to the good stuff and why I was excited to show you all. Uh, and I'd absolutely take C. Gab Gabriel's uh, mention. Look, everything is a suggestion in JavaScript. <laughs> Does anyone know in JavaScript what array plus array is? Well, let me ask you this first. What should array plus array be? Array? Empty array. I would Empty also array. accept type error. Yeah. Uh, that is not what array plus array is. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Array plus array is empty string. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gone. Obviously, it's vanished. I think, I think that's obvious to everyone. Uh, that's the line that kills me. I think that's obvious to everyone. Like I, wanna, I say that to people. Just not ironically, I'll use that, and I hope you do too. I think it's obvious to everyone. It's clear. Now, what, what would array plus object be? This should obviously be type error because those are completely disparate types. Uh, does anyone know what this is? Uh, no. It's Close. Object. No. Far away. It's object. It's object. Yeah. <laughs> Just because JavaScript turns everything into an object, it eats them. Objects eat objects. All right. All right. Nicely done. Now, of course, because uh, this is plus, so you can flip the operands and the same thing comes out. So if we do, what? No, that's just an object. Uh, if you do object plus array, you should get exactly the same thing, which as you can see, you do. 
And finally, uh, the only one of these that's actually true is uh, because you know you add arrays, you get empty string. That doesn't make sense. But an object plus an object is actually not a number technically. <laughs> so this one's actually right. Yeah, like that, that's not wrong. It 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 is not a number. <laughs> and uh, exactly right. Like what is even going on in this lab? I just I don't even understand. <laughs> what person with a brain in their head would think that any of this is a good idea? <laughs> okay, okay. Enough making fun of languages that suck. Let's talk about JavaScript. <laughs> Dude, absolute banger line. Just reinsert the same joke. <laughs> if I say array.new 16, uh, or just array 16, I get an array of 16 things, which it represents as 16 commas, which is obvious. And uh, everyone knew that. If I then join those with a string, then I get the string 16 times. This is actually the only line in this entire presentation that's reasonable. Uh, now, if I take that string and then add a one to it, it interprets uh, the one as, or, or casts the one to a string, and then we get wat one a bunch of times. Fine. Does anyone know what will happen if I subtract one from the string? <laughs> I'm assuming no one does. Let me. I'll give you a hint. Does does this help? Does anyone know? Yes. <laughs> All right. Wet man. <laughs> okay. Thank you for letting me enjoy that absolute tangent. <laughs> And again, seriously, if, if for whatever reason you did not know that, if you had not heard of that talk, I hope now you know. Yeah. Uh, kudos, credit where credit is due. This is Gary Bernhard's chat. Um, and that is why I think <laughs> JavaScript is just the butt of all jokes. Anyway, let's get to uh, what we were supposed to be doing here. Goot loader. Oh, shoot. I need to order uh, dinner. And I might have to slow down the stream pretty soon, too. I don't have, like, a be right back stream overlay, but I totally should. Because I need to get food. Give me a little bit. What a vibe. It is not, unfortunately, Pizza Friday. It is, however, uh, Sushi Monday, if that's even a thing. Do you all uh, eat sushi? I know folks like there. There are people that absolutely despise seafood, but I love it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a big sushi fan. This is really, really hard to do on stream because I have like the anxiety. They're like, "Oh, I should be doing something." but I absolutely didn't. Edamame has to be in there. Sashimi? I normally do sashimi. Thanks for, uh, thanks for just hanging out. Thanks for letting us vibe. Here, you know what? Here, let me entertain you. Sea Matrix. You... Now, if anyone comes over, they're like, oh, yeah, they are hacking. They're getting real work done. Put on hacker typer. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Philadelphia roll.
dude, the song ended. Now I like feel even worse. Well, at least we got another good one. Avocado over barbecue eel or cucumber. No. Ooh. Shrimp, eel, cream cheese, and crab meat. I dig that. I think that's all I need. Feed the fam. I think we're good. We're at the end of the line. Okay. Food is done and we get back to business. You guys want to order, uh, you guys want to order dinner with me? You guys, uh, don't eat sushi? All right. Back in the game. Back to business. Wagism. Bozo. All right, we can actually narrow things down here because Bozo, we know that's the only thing that's actually called. Um, and, uh, that will at least clue us in. And we don't need the other hex there. Or decimal there. The shy hat? No! Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> there will be a time, like, when I ever start to do this, like, full-time, uh, I have no issue just chowing out on stream. Like, that's... Uh, the whole point is to be together and have that community and to show you, like, look, I'm a human being. So, I'll, like wharf down a sandwich bozo is the only thing that actually runs so experience is what we end up checking here based off of the earth six value which is already defined so experience works with com a and a couple variables here is speed t ever used anywhere else no cool we'll make that a first arg oxygen vg not even used phenomenal that can be our second org, not referenced. And a good old much seven. Does not matter, also not used. So first arg all comes from excite nine and we end up returning our iterator here. We can call that uh, string comma, right? String coma. <laughs> What does NTPPO do? No! It's used in wash too! Oh, it's also just one. That might help. Is it reference anywhere else? Knowledge starts at one. Well, it's less than the first argument times other D. So that'll be another iterator. We'll call that... Shit. <laughs> we'll call that shit. I lost my uh, experience. How you doing, chat? You still with me? I don't know if anyone's even hanging. Do I want to rename that? One iterator. I I feel dangerous naming that the same thing as already used, but other D. Whoa, other. Hang on, hang on. I didn't think we'd have to talk about my other D in the stream. Normally I don't. I try not to draw attention to it. Three hundred thirty-one. I can type. Okay, so while, uh, wait a second. First arg is going to end up being whatever we pass to experience V, and we pass Earth 6 to it when we end up running. What the f? Okay, so we're doing some math here. Earth, do we do anything else with Earth 6? 
Rest in peace, Earth one through five. We really, we really didn't take it seriously when we had it. Um, two five one five nine. How about that? So we pass in two five one nine into our experience v function, and well. Our iterator starts at one. Let's comment this out here so we can think. We loop from one up to 25169 or something. Times 331? But return iterator is always gonna be true, right? It's just adding on to that. Wouldn't this always return true? In which case trade J will always run. Oh, and then we run experience again. I don't know if I'm getting lost in the sauce here. Like, are we end up just... All this stuff is the only stuff that matters, right? And there's another random decimal string. But Bozo's the only thing that executes. We execute Bozo. Oh, it was so close. I almost had the actual number. That's going to be a big, long loop. Why would it do that? Yeah, why? So it'll just keep adding one all the way up to that. I don't think string coma even does anything, though. It's not even used anywhere else. It's just useless. That will return true, though. Ah! So experience V, you're absolute garbage, a waste of my time. And we'll just call you count for a long time. No reason to do that, it'll just indirection. What does trade J do? You count for a long time with my G. Hey, my G. How you been, dude? Four, six, three, 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 baby. Literally no reason. What are we listening to? Can I can I skip this song? We skipped that song. Yeah, it's basically sleeping for for nonsense. Count for a long time, but returning the. Wait a second. What the? F It'll only return what? I'm an idiot! It'll just return the iterator and the function will be over. It won't even loop. I'm sure... Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Scott. I just didn't even see it. Waste our time. So dumb. Uh, what does roll seven do? That's just a function. Is round zero also not even used, so that line doesn't matter. So while one, because starts at one isn't going to do much, we'll increment TZ Bibfox to Zibfox. That's not going to do anything else. Six, 
zero six five. Literally no reason. You're just setting yourself to yourself. Straight W, not use anywhere else. Small nine, set to speech. Oh no. Is it trying to reference other things? Like as functions through like a lookup table? You suck. I'm pretty sure it is. So it's calling all the other functions that it keeps adding to itself, right? Because while one six zero five five as an integer will just be that added to itself, we'll try to set a value of small nine indexed to that to then call that with that, which I don't think will even run, right? <laughs> Lapis, thank you. Yeah, I, I spelled six wrong. Was it? <laughs> Fix five. That could very well error, in which case we'll just fall down to the catch statement. But if we catch voices, wow, that's ominous. The voices in my head, speaking of, we're out of music. We, no. No. Voice isn't going to do anything else. And that's just used as a variable. So we can call that not important. You never even execute that. That's not important. It'll just, it'll just be setting the function set at that index, one eight five five seven. Ugh. That just sucks. Does that even ever get ran? No. This is a disaster. It's just going to keep looping around at different functions. Only one of them is going to do something worthwhile. We're just going to be stuck in a loop. We're just going to be stuck in like this rabbit hole, this labyrinth of function calls. You want to just paste into chat GPT? We could do that. We could also just try and run it and see where it errors. Because again, I'm on Linux. It'll try to do some like active... JS active object stuff. So, because we're getting to the end of our time here together, I gotta do family things and eat dinner. We can uh, maybe nuke the network adapter. And then what? Just pull the trigger? We should probably do it from straight up first part, right? All hail Bozo. Yeah. That's where we started. Let's do it. You know what? Before we do, <laughs> let's ask Uncle Chat GPT first. Just in case, not that Chat GPT will somehow have, oh, incredible all holy insight for us, um, but it'll give at least a little bit of peace of mind. And then, look, no matter what happens, whether or not this, like, works or fails, uh, we got to call it, my friends. We spent a lot of time together. Longer than usual, and we got to jam out. We got to laugh with some what talks. I'm, I'm staging ChatGPT right now, trying to remove the left-hand side. There we go. Hello? Hello. There we go. Should we be like, what's up, dude? D 
Deobfuscate. Beautify. And rename pertinent variables for this JavaScript. JScript. JScript code. I need you to fully unravel and analyze what the code does and give back an, the best cleaned representation of the real code that you can. Explain to me everything that this code does. Probably a crappy prompt, but I think we're good. Anything else? Anything else you want us to say to Uncle ChatGPT? And again, let me add the disclaimer. Doing this, yes, tool, yes, AI, wow, buzzword. Um, I can't I can't validate that. I can't prove that. Like I will take it at surface value and I like Unless I can recreate its steps, I can't fully believe whatever it gave me isn't a hallucination or isn't just wrong. So, what you got for me, chatty? Chatty GPTB? Oh, yeah, it's obfuscated JavaScript. I didn't know that. Give me the code. Function names are nonsensical, like Bozo. Go on, Seabiscuit. I mean, like, again, this looks realistic. What the, f what, what? No, no. You're not done. Don't give me a conclusion and say that you're done. <laughs> Security live, I'm right there with you. I would agree right now. Okay. I don't want to spend too much time trying to beat chat GPT into submission, but I will give us a couple more prompts. Give me back only code. Return only the fully deobfuscated and completely unraveled JScript syntax. I need everything in the original sample restructured, reorganized, and renamed so it makes sense to a human analyst. Ah! And then we're not going to go any further. Like, yeah, using a debugger would obviously be ideal. Yeah, ChatGPT is like, nah, I'm not going to do that for you. I know. I know the steps, ChatGPT. This is so dumb. I hate using ChatGPT as a crutch. Especially because it's like, nah, too bad. All right, let's fire the gun. Let's fire it up. Let's do it. Mm, node on what would have been our first part, correct? This is the original cleaned value that we got from D4JS. We didn't have to manually deobfuscate it. Let's try it out. Um... What you doing? <laughs> what's uh what's going on? Node? How you hanging in there? Not that I expected you to give me output, but I kind of thought you might error. If you did use some native Windows stuff. Do an S trace on node? Yeah, it might still very well be counting. 
But no, that again, that function just returned immediately. Do you think it just does a sleep naturally? Is there a fair, like, JavaScript debugger or JScript debugger? Does Node have a verbose flag? I don't know. Whoa, sorry. Been on Windows for way too long. What the... Verbose. Debug. Beat Inspector. That could work. He's still doing his thing, man. It, R2, I appreciate your concern. It is inside of a virtual machine. We are, we are inside of a virtual machine right now. Uh, we have disabled network connectivity. I know it's still a little bit sketch. Like, yeah, I can get spooked and paranoid, but... Can I run in VS Code? I've never done that, but I should learn. You try JS Nice? Yeah. I, uh, I'm so sorry. Again, I, I try to emphasize, look, I don't know where we're gonna go, but doing this manually, even for like this small, quote unquote, small amount of strings to go through, if it's just doing this over and over again for different functions, I would love to be able to write something, again, like an abstract syntax tree that can kind of funnel that and figure that out. I don't know if there's a tool like that that exists yet. And if there is, I'd love to know. But we could just fall down the rabbit hole more and more and more. You should continue this. I mean, we could try. I could do it off stream. You could suffer with me if you wanted to for another stream. But I got to do dinner, my friends. I gotta do family time. I think I gotta uh, start to close up shop. But thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. Uh, this was kind of fun, not gonna lie. Uh, we all got to dig into a little bit of DE4JS. That helped obfuscate, or deobfuscate the first part that we knew that we wanted to get into. And we wouldn't have fallen down that rabbit hole how do we not notice, you know, it's the pieces that might repeat each other? Um, okay. Then, um... Look, hey, tomorrow we'll have a video out for some Active Directory shenanigans. Excited about that. Um, again, I'm very, very behind on trying to get some content, and I should have been doing that rather than streaming. <laughs> uh, but I am really stoked for later this week video. We have a couple more tricks with some of those window shortcuts, the LNK files that I was kind of teasing about earlier. Um, and I think that's the gist, other than maybe a little bit more kind of dark web still log shenanigans. But thank you for hanging out, everybody. Yeah, a lot to learn, a lot of fun on the stream. Uh, I appreciate you letting me banter and riff and have some shenanigans, suddenly becoming a live stream, re like a React streamer. <laughs> but hey, cheers, everybody. Happy Monday. Or Tuesday, whatever time it is for you all in your end of the world. But it was really cool to hang out with you all, and I'll catch you in the next one. pro slow yo you need me to raid let me see if i can do it all right okay fine 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 <laughs> for those of you that some for whatever reason stuck around can i go to twitch and raid anybody <laughs> i appreciate y'all hanging prime is uh rolling right now Raid? Is that how we do it? Oh, I gotta log in. Oh my goodness gracious. We'll do it for the raid.
Thank you, GoPro. You're the reason that I stuck around. You guys can go home. <laughs> you guys don't need to stay here. I'm just gonna, I gotta log in. We gotta do it. We gotta do the raid. Now I'm just vibing. Okay, we're logged in and we're ready. We're gonna do it. We'll finally do some Twitch and we'll raid. Let's go! Raid has been created. Let's go, Twitch. Thank you for hanging out. Enjoy the Primogen. Bye, everyone else.